Hey, what's up? Trader Tim from Emini Mind. A lot more trades this week. I wanted to run through uh, the trades from today, yesterday. We'll kind of tally everything up uh, for the week. So the first, um, first we'll talk about the 15-minute opening range breakout trades, one minutes, and retracements. So today uh, we had well, we, there were three 20-pointers uh, so far this week on the 15-minute, and um, today's it it kind of made a full swing. If you look here, these first, these two 15-minute bars are almost identical, and the trade filled by going one tick in, so it filled to the tick, and then it sold off to the uh, one tick away, so not uh, one tick away from a from the stop. Entry is one tick above the first 15-minute candle. Stop is one tick below, and it made a full swing. It filled. Um, that was the high, came down one tick away from the stop, and then turned around and ripped for, for 20 points. Uh, yesterday's also was a 20-pointer. Uh, I just scroll back to that while I'm on the 15-minute chart. Same thing. Uh, entry, one tick below the low. Stop, one tick above the high of the candle. And then that went down 20 points as well. Tuesdays, we actually filled the gap on the first 15-minute candle, so there was no entry there. And then Mondays... Uh, we same same thing. This one was a long uh, one tick above the candle's high, a stop one tick below the low. Um, this one traded up for a little ways, and then it came back down into kind of that first 15-minute candle's range. That's okay. Uh, just leave the stop alone. One tick below that first 15-minute bar, and then uh, and then it came up and filled somewhere in here. Uh, hit that plus 20. I will move my stop to minus four points when we get to plus 15, just to reduce my risk when we're that far into the trade. Otherwise, I just set it and forget it. And that's that's kind of the secret sauce on that 15 minute. So um, that's 60 points alone with just one contract on there. And um, you know, you, this is a great example of, you gotta get through some of the slow periods and the maybe not so good weeks um, to get to the winners on the other side. So not that, the not that w certain weeks need to be you know you don't want to have massive losing weeks but there's just weeks where you might be kind of treading water or uh, maybe you just break even and there's there's just not a lot going on the market's consolidating and then you get these weeks where it's like bam 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 you know two three um, big like running days I mean look at today um, kind of a consolidation at the in the open in the first 30 minutes but then look at how quickly we broke out. And this is a another perfect example. So many good, um, good examples of of stuff that we talk about every single week. All happened today, or all happened this week. Like a lot of variation. And um, this first thirty minute range, we broke above it, and then we never went back to it. So on a day where we break outside of the first thirty minute range and start to run. You can count on that being a trend day. And on a day where the first 30 minutes, especially if it's a bigger range, and we let's say we stay within the first 30 minute range, let's say it was a really big range like this, and all of this trade was within the first 30 minute range, well, by definition, we're range bound, that's gonna be a much harder day to trade. And you wanna be selling at highs and buying at lows as opposed to trying to trade it uh, with the trend. So that was the 15-minute opening range breakout. Uh, next, we'll go to the one-minute chart, and we'll talk about some of those. So today, uh, the one thing with the one minutes that I will mention is it's okay to take one-minute entries inside of the first 15 minutes. So give yourself, you know, wait at least five minutes. But I've noticed over the last couple of months that uh, there are some decent one-minute setups early in the day. And what I'm looking for are hammers and inverted hammers, um, either at highs and lows or at a halfway back. So today, uh, we gapped up and then, you know, we, we started going sideways a little bit. There were um, a couple of, let's see, the first one, pull up my trades, 641. That was this guy here. We had a high tick. So the nicey tick, extremely helpful, especially on these one minute trades all the time really but especially on the one minute trades 641 was the high and icy tick 641 was this high uh, or it made a double top that was the high um, of that 
candle was the same high as the open just a few minutes earlier. Inverted hammer, I shorted one tick below that candle's low. Um, got a nice initial reaction selling off, and so I, I tightened my stop one tick above the next candle, and then we, we turned around. So that one was uh, a little loser, down 1.75 points, and then the next one, 650, that was here. And we kind of did it again. We came up. Now, one thing I'll mention is the context of today. So yesterday we sold off. We gapped up and sold off all day. And we were right at this 50% retracement. So at the open, seeing a gap, um, we, we gapped up, but we were inside of yesterday's range, kind of in the bottom third of yesterday's candle. And so seeing the rejection at highs gave me a lot of confidence to be looking for a short. And then also, look at this little trend line that was forming here. This was an up trend line. And so seeing the kind of rejection up here at highs and this, this inverted hammer, its tail goes up above these prior highs. Uh, this one did not have a high tick. It was kind of a lower high on this 650 candle. These are Eastern time times. Uh, but it was kind of it was relatively high and the tail poked above the prior high and then was immediately rejected we had this uptrend line so i felt like if we could break that trend line on the entry then we would get a big reaction and we did and so this one sold off uh one tick below uh the the inverted hammer all these bars following i just leave my stop alone because this was the breakdown bar and so this big big candle here um everything following it was inside so no need to tighten your stop, and that keeps you in the trade for longer. You have to have a little patience, but you know, by now you should know that you need a lot of patience with trading. So kept my stop above there. It went down again, and then once again, we, we were bought up down at low. So this one kind of offset that first trade and uh, was a 1.75 winner. Um, and that's where it came down. I was already in the 15-minute uh, long at that point. It came down double-bottomed here down at lows, and then that kind of started our, our trend higher. And I had a couple of notes on things I wanted to mention. So at 7.09, that was, oh, okay, that's a little bit further out. So at that point now, the 30 minutes has been established, and it was a very small, tight range. And so here's our 30-minute range. And the 15-minute long had already traded. We came down to lows, and now we were back up at highs. A pretty tight range. It was like nine points. And then we were sitting right on top of the 30-minute high. And at 7.09, that was here. And look what the nicey ticks were doing. We started making this downtrend here. We broke the downtrend and we turned into an uptrend. And so at the same time that the market kind of came down to lows, then we turned around uh, at lows, 659, there was a low tick at lows, and then started to trend higher. So anytime you have a low tick that lines up with low price, that could be the low of the day, um, as was the case today. And so that gives you confidence that the move up is viable on those pullbacks. So had the 15 minute opening range breakout going, and then we got this really nice pullback to the top of the 30-minute range. And you can do a couple of things here. You can buy above the high of the hammer here. Um, now, this hammer was not a the lowest tick of the day, but it's a pullback to this uptrend line on the nicey tick. So, you know, relative in trend, a pullback to the trend. You could buy above the high of this hammer and uh, ride that up, just trailing each bar um, or trailing swings, whichever. Uh, trailing each candle is going to be a more aggressive approach. Um, if we go to the 512 tick chart, there was a beautiful pullback to the top of the 30-minute range right here. And look at these trends. This was the low down here, 59. And then nice, this one went a little bit deep into the um, it kind of came down almost to the 61.8, but notice how it held the 50, and then the next one, or it held the 61.8 rather, uh, the next one didn't even make it to the 50, so we were getting more bullish, and then this was the third one in the trend, and, and why this one is important, this one is worth taking, 41.34, is because we pulled back to the top of the 30-minute range. We already got our breakout. Like, um, we punched through the roof, and we landed on the roof um, 
and now we have some support. So if you think about like uh, shooting a cannon through the roof and then landing a couple feet next to the hole, now you have some support. You're not falling back through that same hole. You're landing next to it. Or if you're like um, underneath the ice in the water and you like punch through the ice and you climbed out next to the ice and you're next to that hole, now you have that support. So we punch through and, and now the 30 minute high is now that support. So 4134 was a great long entry. And this one, because it started to rip really quickly, so at first, once we get to the swing high here, I'll move my stop to break even. Then I'll trail the next 618. And then if we start ripping like this, we're beyond the negative 618. I just came in and started trailing each candle. And that happened pretty quickly over the course of you know, like less than five minutes. Um, and I ended up getting out right about here around 43 something, 43.50 maybe, right in here. They were moving pretty quickly. And I just trailed my stop as best I could. And that was a nice runner. Um, that one went... Uh, about nine points, I believe, plus the three-point first target. So that was a nice uh, move off the top of the 30-minute range. And then a um, little bit of consolidation, or I should say a lot of consolidation through the middle of the day because I didn't get that 15 points um, was all the way up here, uh, 41.53. Actually, at 41.53 and a quarter um, is where it got filled, so later in the morning. And uh, that was the day today. So a couple of nice um, longs and then the... Um, one minute today was was kind of a wash, but yesterday's one minute. So this is now this is Wednesday. Uh, we talked about the 15s already. Um, first, I guess we'll go to the micro first, and then we'll go to the one minute. So halfway backs yesterday. Well, there was one one long that I took at the bottom of the range, and that was 43. Let me first turn on 30 minute high and low and it'll make a little bit more sense. So here's yesterday. We're going to mark, I'll mark the low of the first 30 minute range. Go to, eh, go to a five minute chart. And so down in here at 743 Pacific is where the long setup. And we had a low tick See, low tick a day at the bottom of the 30-minute range. So that was here. 37, we had a low tick. We came up, we broke the swing high back here. We broke the 61.8 as well and of the short going down. And then the long set up like this. And it lined up right at the 30-minute low. Um, this one stopped me out, but it was a good setup. Um, right at the bottom of the 30-minute range. So see, we, we kind of came back up and punched through the 30-minute range. And so I was looking for us to go from the bottom of the range back to uh, the top of the range, which would have been up here. And we had the low tick. But here's an instance where um, the market doesn't, uh, doesn't get that follow through, and we kind of fall back down. And then you can look for, uh, just turn around and you know, start looking for shorts underneath the 30-minute range and, and riding, it, riding it down. Um, and that one kind of, we dipped down yesterday and kind of made that V reversal, came pretty far back into the 30-minute range, but we didn't break the high. The high was up here. Um, and then we rolled over again into the close, so kind of like a double dip yesterday. And that was the, that was the only retracement. But then the one-minute chart, those were earlier in the day, and this is where, you know, that first 15 minutes can be um, kind of beneficial to look for those one minutes. Here was a double top, this inverted hammer, one tick below. This one traded kind of quick, um, but even if you were, so 58.75 was the actual entry. Uh, if you end up 58.50, not really a big deal. Even 58.25, you, know, you, you just got to get in as fast as you can, drop that order. And uh, that one ripped down, um, had a little bit of a break above. So this was, you know, that was the entry if you, or the, the exit if you trailed each candle's low. That was for seven points. And then there was another one, 726. Now this one was at a halfway back. So this was here. And so this one, you'll notice, we broke the halfway back short. And so this was the next halfway back long. And it was within the first 30 minute range, but it was at the 50%, and we hadn't broken two 50% retracements in a row yet. So this little hammer here at the 50%, so you had some potential support. 
and that one bounced, and then by trailing each candle's low, you end up out here for three points. So nice little pop, and you're, you're exiting pretty close to the reversal, and that's when we sold off and then came down here, got the low tick, and that halfway back long was down in here. So uh, 10 points yesterday plus a... Uh, a scratch today, so it was like 10, and then Monday I had one for uh, a, a quarter of a point, and then uh, seven and a half points on the retracements uh, so far for the week. Now that's for two contracts. Um, on my trade log, um, I divide it down. I usually trade like six, so I, on the log though, I divide it out to two just so it's easier if you're doing different multiples, you can just double or triple or whatever you needed to do. So two contracts for the um, retracements. The one minute is annotated in just a one contract, and then the the 15 minute as well. So you got 60 uh, plus 10 plus seven and a half. So like 77 and a half points with one and two contracts, and that's that's a pretty solid week. Uh, and, the, and the week's not even over. Usually on weeks like this, where I'm coming into Friday with a really good week, um, I'll go into the day in the morning maybe a little bit conservative and if I just if I just have one winning trade I just call it um, I don't really need to do much more than that on a Friday and if I just come into the day and have one stop out I usually call it so um, usually play Friday a little bit more conservative if I'm coming off a big week just to really go into the weekend with a lot of you know positive momentum especially because the last couple of weeks have been kind of blah and there haven't been that many good opportunities. I mean, there have been some, you know, a couple of 10-pointers here and there, but um, you really had to kind of pick and choose and be patient. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you can you can trip, trip yourself a little bit when there's not a lot of trades day after day after day. So much better week this week. And if we go to the daily chart real quick, just to wrap things up, and we look at the halfway back, we are um, beyond the negative 23, on the daily halfway back long, but we're still holding around this 41.55 on the daily halfway back short. So don't be surprised if you know the rug gets pulled out from under us at some point here in the next couple of weeks and we get some bigger selling days because um, we've been in this low volatility, um, just constant uptrend over the past month. And it, it can be easy to kind of think, oh, it's all, you know, glitz and glamour and, and things are all hunky-dory. But um, I'm not necessarily loading the boat with puts uh, just yet up here, but I've got my eye on this kind of double top potential if we start to, um, you know, let's say we get an inverted hammer on the daily chart and the tail comes right up to the negative 61.8. I would consider putting some puts on and uh, seeing if we get a little pullback. I mean, even the next 50% would be a little bit of a ways down. So um, that's what I got going this week. Um, if you have questions, drop them in the comments below. Otherwise, we'll talk to you on Tuesday in the live trading session, or uh, you can always shoot me an email if you have uh, specific questions as well. Uh, take care and uh, have a great week.